it's very confusing for them. Oh man. Um, when they come out of like, say they've been in a 20 year marriage and they've been in a sexist marriage, they get out of it. And now suddenly they're like, could you imagine like stranger in a strange land? Could you, you imagine know? you get married in the year 2000 when Britney Spears was sane? Yes. And then <laughs> you come back here in 2024 and she's dancing with knives and she's fucking crazy. And now you're single and you're trying to talk yeah. to a chick at, yeah. the, at the bar yeah. in 2024. Versus in 2000, you were like, you know, you could do that. Mm -hmm. You know, Roosh uh, said this. I agree with him so much on this one thing that he mm -hmm. said. He said that the cell phone and bottle service killed Night Game. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, it's that came back to me because mm -hmm. we had a yacht party um, like a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we had like a crazy ratio. Like, you know, as much as the haters want to say, there was no girls, bro. We had this like seven to one ratio, right? Mm -hmm. The boat was so fucking big, you just couldn't see everything, right? It was so bad. One of the girls I was supposed to meet up with, I thought she didn't show up to the party. And mm -hmm. she was like, I was on the yacht the whole time. I was like, what the fuck? And she's, I was like, you're lying. And she sent me a picture and she was on the yacht. I was like, oh shit. We were live streaming, so I missed it. But we had, there were so many girls there. Mm -hmm. But I digress. The main point here is that we went to, we went to the club after. We went to Van Dome, you know, Fresh's favorite fucking sure. place. But yeah. With the, when we had the guys there, so I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'll fucking go. I haven't been to a club in a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I go in there and I'm like, you know, if you don't have a section, dude, you're fucked. Like you don't have a section oh, yeah. like yeah. With, with the bottle service mm -hmm. or whatever. And it's like the girls, like all they care about is like getting into a section. Like that's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. Right. Prestige. Um, yeah. yeah. And then, and then the girls that are in a section, they're on their phones. So it's like, Mm -hmm. people don't even go to the nightclub or the bar anymore to like actually socialize. They yeah. go there. They're to not like, there in the moment. They're there to make for content. Is what th that's what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I genuinely do believe in it. Then I, when this happened, I like it reminded me cause like, it's hilarious. We're sitting there waiting. Right. And like a bunch of girls, like just randomly walk in and we brought like 30 girls with us too. Mm -hmm. They just walked in. No problem. We had to obviously go through and pay and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, Oh, look, these useless get in and we got to pay. Look at this shit. Mm -hmm. But um, it re and then we walked in and reaffirmed like that. That quote just hit me immediately. Like, bottle service and the cell phone absolutely destroyed nightlife. So you take a guy like you said trying to get back in the game, right? You're two thousand. He's getting fucking married with TRL still going on and mm -hmm. MTV and Real World right. and yes. you know wearing yeah. Gap jeans and shit like that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, um, twenty twenty four, yeah, you're frozen you, out of cry you're unfrozen from cryo freeze, dude, and now you come out. You walk into yeah. a nightclub now, mm -hmm. and you're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Because in the early 2000s, this is like no one had smartphones yeah. like this. Like, a lot of these guys that we're de we're working with right now, they don't know that like like getting a girl's phone number is like effectively meaningless. It's like oh, you got to follow on Instagram, right? Oh, yeah. Well, what's Instagram? Well, they know what Instagram is because like maybe their kids have it or something like that. But the thing is, is they don't know how to like optimize their pictures on there. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what works best for them. Um, the uh, and mystery used to teach that like a number close. Oh yeah, good. a number close was, was like, was, was was a, big, like was a number deal. close was was a, a a metric of success. Yeah, back in the mid two thousands. Yeah, right? and now it's a, it's it's a basically meaningless it's because because it's all follow me on Instagram. Let me see if you're cool enough for me to want to hang out with you. Do you have cool friends? Do you have a little dog? Where are you? Are you are you somebody that I would want to actually you know hang out with? And it's almost like your professional. It's almost like having a LinkedIn for you, like your personal life or your your resume of yeah. you kind of thing. And even the Instagram is like you. You almost have to you know you have to get like multiple bases of contact. Like I've told guys before, yeah. like you don't not only need to get a number, you need to get an Instagram. And you damn near to frame, need to frame a date when you meet her right then and there right. because like women are so fucking flaky in 2024 because right. they just have too many options, yep. right? Like girls like actually used to respect and admire male attention in the early 2000s. But like now it's, it's like it's yeah. cheap. So like yeah. they don't care. So like the other thing too, I think guys need to understand, especially for the older guys, 45, 60, like mm -hmm. that are in your group. Like when you text girls now on iPhones, there's this feature where if it's like not a recognized number or whatever, or they haven't had communication. A lot of times it'll just go like into a random spam box, and she might never mm -hmm. check it. Yeah, yeah. So it'll she go might into your, like get... your hidden hidden messages or something like that. And unless you're actually actively looking at those things, it's not going to make it. And, and I think another thing a lot of like older guys need to see, like 45 to 60, is like a lot of them might have a daughter. Like, mm -hmm. just take a look at your daughter's phone. You're, she, she might be fucking 18, 17, whatever. Just look right. at her phone. You're going to see 150 missed calls, 300 text messages, a thousand mm -hmm. emails, mm -hmm. like. Just unheard of <laughs> levels of attention. Yeah, all unread. Like, yeah. like women today get unheard of levels of attention. And I think like uh, it's overwhelming for guys to get in the game. And then they, like, mm -hmm. like, cause whenever I've talked to like older guys that like just getting back in, one the biggest mm -hmm. thing they have is like frustration. Like, 
what the fuck? Like women play a lot of games nowadays. I'm like, dude, do you know how many options like the average girl has? And they have mm-hmm. no fucking clue. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Yeah. What was kind of like the germ of the idea for this. Have you ever seen, I think it's on like Amazon prime, but it's a show called Tulsa King and it has okay. Sylvester Stallone is in it. Okay. And I, without giving you too many spoilers here, Sylvester Stallone plays a, uh, like a mobster. He was like in the mafia and he goes to jail 25 years ago for a crime he didn't commit. He took the fall for somebody else in the mob. Right? When was the movie set? What time? Uh, well, it's funny. It's when he it was it literally it's modern day. And so he went to jail 25 years ago. Okay. And the start of the, the start of the series is when he's finally it's getting like out 2000. here into the 2024, right? Or yeah. 2023. So he went in like the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, exactly. So 25 years ago, right? He comes out and he still thinks everything is like things are 25 years ago. And it's interesting because like all of the things that like it it sort of reminds you of all the shit that we try to go to Radio Shack. Yeah, we take it for granted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) What's a beeper? beeper? (laughs) Right, exactly. So he's coming out. And the 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 mafia is afraid he's going to take over like the New York thing, so they keep him in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And now he basically takes over Tulsa. And the first thing he does is he goes to like a, a weed dispensary in Tulsa, and he thinks it's still illegal. So oh. he thinks it's like this backroom kind of like operation. He goes, they're like, so he's like punching guys and like taking over. Then he's like, no, sir, it's legal now. You don't have to worry yeah. anybody. He's like, anybody can come in and buy. Yes, anybody can. Right? Oh man, and so. So he takes over sort of the drug trade of Tulsa, but it's all legal drugs, right? Well, even the drug trade has yes. changed significantly. And like, so what was funny to me is, is he years. plays he plays a character who is like 76 or 70, yes, okay. which is exactly how old uh, Sylvester Stallone is right now, right? Yeah. And so the the humor in the show is he, was, he went away for 25 years, and he, now he's sort of like thought out of cryo freeze kind of thing. And I thought about this and I go, you know, that's kind of like a lot of guys when they go and they've been married for, tw- I've been married for 28 years, right? I, I'm i in the red pill space enough to know, you know, what, and you're what's around going on. All the time and, so you're, you I've, know what the I've fuck's going on. In, yeah. I've worked in, in casino marketing. I've been wine and spirits. I'm doing this stuff with Mike and everything like that. But the thing that's funny to me is like the guys that we have that have already joined this group right now, they're like Tulsa King. Like they don't know like that what Instagram is. They don't know like how the sexual marketplace has changed because when they got married 25 years ago, it was a global sexual marketplace come or a, a local sexual marketplace. They come into into 2024 and it's globalized. We talk about this all the time. You good guys talk about it on your show all the time. It's like you, you have I women who can, believe that is the root they, cause. Yeah, of- they can get Drake to get them on a, y- a yacht somewhere in in Miami, right? And it's not even. I think people need. I to think have the this. global sexual marketplace is literally one of the biggest precipitators of like the failure the failure of relationships in modern oh, yeah. day society yeah, but because, sorry, yeah, well, I was say because it's 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 choice paradox is what it is and like i i, I remember when when uh, you guys uh, somebody put fresh on the spot and said like how many girls do you think at, at colleges or something like that are actually getting flown out to uh you know to yacht parties in oh, Miami. Yeah. and he said something like 30 percent, which was like crazy but the thing is is it, it, what he should have said is it doesn't matter what the percentage is it matters what the perception is so if one of these girls sees one single girl that gets flown out that's all that it matters to affect the so the, the the sexual marketplace for that girl because i'm hotter than that and she got flown out yeah. and fuck that means that i'm at least as valuable as that and i don't want to have anything to do with everybody that's in my local sexual marketplace yeah. if the possibility exists that i could get flown out to a yacht party by somebody who's rich and famous 